Hey guys, Ruben Lara here, and today I want to talk a little bit about a mindset that I sometimes have when I'm approaching a painting, and that is thinking about it like I'm sculpting it out of a block of clay. Kind of just sculpting forms, starting with your midtones, and um, yeah, when I think about it from this perspective, I'm just always surprised about how quickly an image emerges. This one I did in about an hour, and in fact, uh, what I want to show you here is a little bit of this, of this um, you know, scrub through of this hour long recording that I did, um, which is also available on my Gumroad store for you to take a look at uh, at your own at your own pace. But I also saved this clip style uh, clip studio file in a few layers here, just so you can get a sense of of this process. You can see that in stage one, um, I always do my initial block in under my lines, and that way I can just really not think about you know staying within the lines or it's just a very loose and messy approach I'm just getting my initial colors and uh, blocking in um, a very general idea of these highlights and, and not even the darkest shadows yet but already you can kinda you know get a sense of, of this concept of sculpting out um, out of a you know some base colors my next stage is flattening uh, this this base layer into into one layer and after that I'm just you know basically painting on one layer so you see that stage two is already a lot more uh, defined but it's you know it has its base in this local color that I've laid in in each of these uh, in each of these broad areas so there's my stage two my stage three um, obviously has a little more color uh, one thing I like to do is paint within a color gamut mask which maybe is a, could be the subject of another uh, tutorial but you can see that by limiting my color palette I'm just really making sure that um, I'm not going overboard with my saturations uh, basically what I do at this stage is is hit my hue saturation and um, and bump up the saturation to a point where I like it you can see that the, the color harmonies and balances are there even at this very unsaturated state but by limiting my colors early on I find that I just have a lot more success later when I when I want to bump it up so that's my stage two um, so at the stage three, I've already increased those uh, saturations a little bit, and at my stage four, uh, I have my. I'll just turn off this canvas texture real quick. I have some color shifts that I've applied as well, but let me just turn off the color shifts just so we can see the pure painting. You can kind of see the difference between my stage three and my stage four. Not much. It really is just kind of adding small details at the end and. And, and that's what I really want to focus on, on you know, in, in these few minutes here is if you think about your painting as large planes, big brushwork, the addition of a small details gives the impression of a detailed painting. So if you look at these you know, little areas where uh, down here by the fingers, let me uh, switch to a, an arrow here, these little areas down here by the fingers, um, when I turn on my stage four, are not that much more detailed than the previous stage. But they came in very quickly because I had a pretty pretty solid foundation with this kind of sculpted uh, form work that I had done on both the hands and the chicks. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to come, come here to my screen recording. I confuse the uh, two screens here. But you can see that early on, um, okay, there's my color blocking. And I'm just kind of doing some real broad strokes, really not worrying about the line work. You can see I'm painting under my line work. And I'm kind of just getting everything in there. All right, now I have, um, I've flattened that into a, you know, one solid layer. Now I'm painting over my pencil work, which I love to, to just kind of fold that pencil and, uh, and paint in together. I really, I feel like it makes a nice rich, makes for a nice rich look. All right, I'm kind of moving that in. And I'm going to move up here to this point at around 25. Okay. Um, I've thrown a hue saturation layer at the top called value. Um, there's a certain point where I, where I, I really need to, to make sure that my values are, are working. And it, it can be really hard to do that when you're also trying to assess color. Also the topic of another um, session on color. But um, what I'm doing here is... Um, having a hue saturation layer on the top, I'm painting underneath that, but I'm only focusing on value. So you can see here that as I color pick the, the, the uh, color underneath, and I'll just go ahead and maybe speed this up twice, okay? I'll color pick the color underneath, make, making sure that my color picker is picking only from that layer, and you'll see me 
go up to the color slider over and over. And all I'm doing is adjusting the lightness up and down. Essentially what I'm doing though is, is kind of resetting my local palette on the canvas. And the point of this video that I want to really stress here without getting into getting too much off track is my next stage of blending my highs and lows are exactly that a next stage while I'm painting I'm not really thinking about you know blending these transitions in. I'm just thinking about laying patches of color in a way that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sculpting and raising and lowering these sections so I, I like to approach my painting in a way that I'm just thinking about one thing at a time and evaluating one thing at a time again in this case um, I'm not evaluating color I'm just uh, evaluating value right and I'm also not evaluating um, how things are blending with each other. I'm just laying in blocks of color that I'm, I'm going to worry about blending later. So I'll let this go through a little bit. And because I know that the color underneath is, is sound, right, from my initial block ins, I'm actually not even worrying about the color I'm picking. I know it's correct. I'm just lightening and darkening with the HLS slider. And by the way, I wanna make sure that my slider is on HLS and not on HSV. Another reason why I really love Clip Studio, Photoshop doesn't have an HLS slider. Uh, I find that um, that lightness algorithm from HLS just really works really nicely when I'm adjusting values of colors underneath. You'll see uh, soon when I remove the value layer, the hue saturation layer, that I'm always surprised at how, how nice it looks. I mean, obviously the blending hasn't happened here yet. Um, but now, now here's what I'm doing. I'm taking this oily blender brush and now I'm now sculpting in the right forms based on what I see in the photograph. Now I'm not thinking about the color there. I've already laid the color and now I can think about the form again. So again, it's kind of separating um, these different decision, separating the decisions I have to make into different blocks. Right, so I decided the value, I decided the color, I decided where those colors need to be. Now I'm now I'm actually sculpting this form out based on, on what's there. And in fact, this oily blender is, is you know works regardless of the color I'm on, which I really like, which you know kind of fits into this uh, it's it fits into this idea of laying down local color and then blending it after the fact. So again, I'm not really thinking about choosing color anymore. I'm just using this brush to to move move this paint around, just enjoy that process, sculpt and re-sculpt, can always repaint, right, um, and go from there. Now here I'm using what's called a sculpt brush, I mean, I've called it a sculpt brush, I'm, I'm also offering it on my uh, Gumroad store if you want to go ahead and, and take a look at that, but I really like it because um, it just, it allows you to, to sculpt with a specific color, but it's not so aggressive that um, that you're you know you're making aggressively broad changes to the form you're on. It kind of has a nice build up to it. So anyway, that's uh, basically what I wanted to show you. Let me just show you a little bit about how this sculpt brush works, and I'll just scoot this forward and kind of get a, get a good sense of of the ending of that painting. All right. Um, so that whole painting was only done with these brushes right here and I really like to limit the amount of brushes I use on any given piece. I just find it simpler for me. I know exactly what brush does and, and it's very controllable. Um, at the beginning of of this particular piece I, I always lay in with the with Clip Studio's standard oil paint flat brush. I, I feel it's immediate, it's it's controllable. I know exactly what it's gonna do and I and I love it. I just move this color wheel down here. So there's your your standard uh, oil paint flat brush. I've modified that to uh, into a cat's tongue that just has a little bit more of a, of a taper at the end but it's, it's really the same brush I use that um, later on a lot as I'm kind of laying in these details uh, and that's just basically the cat's tongue cat's tongue brush from this point forward you know when I want to lay in immediate color all right but let me just describe uh, what the sculpt and oily blender brushes do so I'm on this exact same color here, and you'll notice that as I kind of move this sculpt in, and by the way, it's not really meant to be used at huge, broad, um, huge, broad areas. It's it's a pretty detailed brush, so I've I've kept it fairly high resolution. And anyway, I don't I don't use it to block in large you know swaths of color. This is what I use my my oil paint flat brush for. It's quick, 
and it's it's a, it's a fantastic brush. But the sculpt brush allows me to now uh, take a base color and just start shifting it either lighter, darker, maybe to another hue. For example, if I wanna if I wanna just start shifting this green, I can very you know softly just start brushing this in, and I I don't know it just has a really oily soft quality to it that I, I just enjoy working with so much. The oil paint the oil paint flat brush also blends, but because it's it's just an, a more aggressive blend, I find I have a harder time playing around with it. For example, I'm on this green and let's say I want to blend this blue into the screen. As soon as I start blending in, um, the color shift is is immediate, which I like in some cases, you know. Um, if I'm if I'm kind of blocking in an eyeball, for example, I want to have that immediate, you know, darkness um, that's controllable. Um, but when I don't, when I just want to sculpt in, so let me come back to my sculpt brush in this green. I can actually, uh, for example, I'm painting very softly here, right, and I'm just slowly bringing in that color. But I'm keeping painterliness, and that is my my biggest. Um, desire right in a brush like this even even though I'm on this pretty intense green like coming from this blue it's like I'm painting with that blue um, until I press you know very hard and then it, it just starts to accumulate there so yeah that's the sculpt brush I think you'll I think you'll enjoy it and then my oily blender is something that I use a lot after I have you know patched in a bunch of colors so let's just go ahead and take the oil paint flat brush and um, just you know get some kind of skin tone for example and let's say we have you know blocked in some some highlights and maybe some some creases here again oil paint flat brush or the cat stung it's um, immediate right now I can use this sculpt brush to just keep adjusting that form and again if it's Got a bright enough value, and I keep and I keep painting the, in there. I can really, without having to change color, just sculpt up, sculpt up, sculpt up. And I think that's what I I love about it most is I'm not constantly changing color, just adjusting my size, because it's uh, it's not as aggressive. This, in fact, even if I use this light color into this this dark area, it still allows me to, you know, to kind of go here and, and sculpt. Again, if I start painting a little bit thicker, I get that nice painterly transition and if I don't want to add any kind of color I can just use my oily blender which doesn't rely on color at all and um, this just you know blends colors which is really nice painterliness right that's what that's what we're after so yeah if you're interested in using either of these two brushes feel free to head on over to my gumroad store and uh, I have uh, this layered file, it's, I also have uh, the full hour of this painting, right? Real-time painting, you can watch it real-time if you want or speed it up. It's not narrated. Um, and I also include my sculpt brush and my Oli Blender for you to play around with. All right, enjoy. Enjoy.